Hello everyone, let me introduce you to a wonderful chunk of cast iron with a lovely windy handle. It's called a rotary table. This video is mainly about this rather useful item and a simple way you can set it up on the milling machine. The job that's intertwined with this rotary table started in my last video. Let's have a little recap of the T-nut job, part one. One of my ongoing projects is the rebuild of this wonderful milling machine. It's called the Alexander Master Toolmaker. This piece at the top is a vertical head. It should be held in place by two bolts, but as you can see, one is missing. Behind the vertical head is a T-slot that is circular. This allows the head securing bolts to slide in the slot and then secure the vertical head at the required angle. The single remaining bolt I'm going to take away. It and the missing bolt are going to be replaced by two curved T-nuts. It's the manufacture of these two T-nuts that requires the use of this rotary table. Just two more things and we're right up to date. The piece of steel you see in the vise just here is our job. It came with a large hole in the centre from a previous life as a clamp. The other two holes are now tapped M12. These are the centre holes of our two new T-nuts. This triangular aluminium plate is an offcut we're using as a fixture plate. This will hold our job onto the rotary table. It is at the moment being drilled with two 3.5mm holes, and they're on the same centres as the M12 threaded holes in our job. And with that, we're right up to date. What's next? It's time to set up the rotary table on the milling machine. The vise needs to be removed first. Now lift the rotary table and place it on the table of the milling machine. I secure it with two T-bolts. For those of you not familiar with the rotary table, this is a rotary table and as the name suggests it rotates. You see I turn this handle here, this wheel and the table will rotate. There are two scales, one on the side of the table itself and one on the wheel and using those I can move to an exact position of degrees down to uh, a minute or a second. So it's a fairly accurate bit of kit. If I want to move the table around quickly for setting up, then I can use an Allen key, undo this lock here. That enables me to take this gear out of mesh, and now I can spin the wheel around, or the table around. When I want to now make an accurate measurement, I can bring this back into mesh, like that, do up this lock, and then I can measure off the, uh, the angle. If I want to be really accurate, once I've set this table up and then I want to do, say, uh, a mill in the X plane, which is along here, and I don't want this to move, we have locks on the side and there's one on each side and then this won't move at all. Uh, that's a quick and dirty <laughs> explanation as to what the uh, table does. For those of you not familiar with the vertical milling machine, this is the vertical milling machine. Now, this part here is called the head. This is the vertical head of the milling machine. It normally has a chuck in there and then the chuck holds the cutter which will be cutting your job. Now on a milling machine the cutter stays where it is and we move the job into that cutter. And we move the job into the cutter by moving the table that the job is sitting on. Now the table can move in three different axes. If I move this handle or wheel, they had two names, I can move the table in X and that goes backwards and sorry that goes left and right across the milling machine. If I move the handle in the center here this will move the table in the Y axis. The large wheel on the left hand side here if I rotate that that moves the table in Z which is up and down. Now what's happening here? Well, I've placed the triangular fixture plate in the milling machine and started to cut a pocket into its bottom face. Our job is going to be held to the top face of the fixture plate using two hex head bolts. As we need the fixture plate to sit flat on the rotary table, the bolt heads will sit under the plate and get in the way. We need a pocket machine large enough to take the two hex head bolts and allow them to sit sub flush to the surface. This pocket is going to be 9mm deep and plenty big enough to swallow up the two hex heads of the securing bolts. Now the vise has gone and the rotary table is on the table of the milling machine, we've got to align the centre of the rotary table to the centre line of the vertical head. Now let me bring you in a bit closer and I can show you how we do that. 
Now, this is the process that I use to align the centre of the rotary table to the centre of the vertical head. Now, the first thing we need to do is remove the chuck. The chuck's held into the vertical head with a number three taper and also a bolt that runs up to the top called the draw bolt. Now, I've loosened the draw bolt and I'm just going to tap it at the top and that will break the taper that was holding it in. Now, the chuck is held in by this taper. It's called a Morse taper. It's known as a locking taper. If I take the chuck away to the side, there's the taper, the number three Morse taper. Now I'm going to put the chuck up here and now what I want to do in the vertical head is load in there a centre. Now here's a centre, uh, that centre has got a number two Morse taper on, we've got a number three up there so we use an adapter on the side, a two to three adapter and that means that I can push this up there, the tapers locked together. To make sure that it's in nice and squarely I can turn the power on and power up the motor and I can see there's no wobble so that's bang on centre. I'll turn the power off again. Now the rotary table that has a hole in its centre and the nice thing about this hole is it's actually a number two Morse taper. And what that means is once it's clean we can put in another centre and here's a a sender with a number two Morse taper and that will go in there. Now I've got to be careful because I don't want it to stick and I can feel that it's in there nice and securely. So we now have a sender here on the centre of rotation of the table and a sender here for the centre of rotation of the cutter. All we need to do is line these up. So if I come up... Okay so we're getting close to the, the height of this centre now on the milling machine the axis that goes backwards and forwards like this towards you and away that's the Y axis and the axis that goes left to right is the X. Now when we do our cutting we're actually going to be using the X axis so this is the uh, this is the X axis here. Now all we've got to do is use our two uh, wheels here and line up the two centres. That's lined up in that axis and that's lined up in Y. Now we're not going to be moving Y anymore so what I'm going to do is put the lock on down here and that now stops any movement in this direction. So when we do our cutting we'll be using X. So I'll bring that back until it is spot on which is just there and that's probably within a thou or so. The two T-nuts that we're making, they don't have to be that accurate. So the amount of accuracy we have here when, when we've aligned these two centres is good enough and we could go ahead and start cutting our T-nuts with that. Our fixture plate is now on the bench drill. I put the centre back in the chuck, brought the chuck down, centred this hole to the chuck so I know that's in centre, um, put a 12.5 millimetre drill in the chuck this is a clearance for M12. Now I'm not putting a piece of wood underneath because the pocket is under this hole so I can fill the drill go into the pocket and I won't damage the bed. Right let's drill that hole. I can feel it going through into the pocket now and we're through. Okay let's line up the other hole and drill that one as well. So the fixture plate has now been drilled all I need to do now is under the clamps, uh, deburr the two holes and then we can see if it all lines up and the uh, job fits on top of the plate. We have our fixture plate on the bench and we have our job as well and we've got the two 12 or M12 bolts. Now the job goes onto the, the plate with this holy side up like that and now we see if the bolts fit the job. That's one screwing in and do they line up? They do! That are right we need a 19 millimeter socket so they will be tightened up with a wrench eventually. Let's see if they are sub flush they are with about a millimetre to spare. 
that's good so all has gone to plan at the moment now we must clamp our job in the rotary table but how on earth do we work out its correct position so we can then cut the t-nuts to our desired curved shape there are several methods we could use to achieve this but this is how i've decided to do it the two tapped holes just here and here are the same distance from this edge they're also the same distance from the center line i scratched just here as can be seen the old hole was not in the center of the bar I'm using an offcut of aluminium. On one of its sides, I've marked out this single line at 90 degrees to its edge and lined that up with the center line of our job. This is one of the M12 by 25mm X head bolts that will be holding the job onto the fixture plate. I apply marking out ink on its end and then scratch into that two center lines. Where the two lines cross will be the dead center of the bolt. It's at that point where I use a center punch to mark it. I do the same procedure on a second M12 bolt and then screw them both into our job. We can check if our centre dot at the end of the bolt is on centre simply by putting the bolt in the thread and then turning it. And as you can see the centre dot doesn't wobble around so I know that that centre dot is in the centre of the bolt. So we know the centre dots in the end of the M12 bolts are in the centre of those bolts. We also know from the drawing that the centre of the both holes that hold the bolts are 67.79mm away from the centre of the rotary table. I set my dividers as close as I can to 679 place one point in the centre of a bolt and strike an arc across the centre line on the plate. Move the point of the dividers to the centre of the second bolt and strike again across the centre line on the plate. Now we have a cross on the centre line that's showing where the centre of the rotary table should be. I centre dot in the centre of that cross. Using the dividers still set to 67.79mm, I place one point where the centre of the rotary table will be and then strike across our job and the ends of the two bolts. The line that's produced is the centre line of our two new T-nuts. I set the dividers as close as I can to 77.79mm and strike another arc. This shows the outer edge of the new T-nuts. I finish the rest of the guidelines using the dimensions from the drawings to set the dividers. Using the two M12 by 25mm steel bolts, I secure the job onto the fixture plate. I have a shaft with a number 2 Morse taper. This is placed in the Morse taper in the centre of the rotary table. The top face of that shaft has a centre hole drilled in it. I set the dividers as close as I can to 67.79mm. That's the distance from the centre of the rotary table to the centre of the two securing bolts. I move the fixture plate around until both the bolt centres are 67.79mm from the centre of the rotary table. Now the fixture plate is in the correct position, I estimate where its two securing holes need to be drilled and mark their positions. I place the centre in the chuck of the bench drill, bring the centre down to the centre punch mark and clamp the plate in position on a small sheet of MDF. Drill a 3.5mm pilot hole, drill the 12mm clearance hole. Do the same procedure for the second securing hole. Right, let's start to set up our plate on the table. Here's the rotary table. We're going to start by putting the taper in the center. M2 taper here, that fits in nicely. We have a machine center in the middle of there, so we know that that's bang in the middle of the rotary table. Our fixture plate, which is here, is going to be held down to the rotary table through two bolts. And these are M10 bolts and they're going to be going into M10 T-nuts here. The T-nuts fit into the T-slot. Here's another T-nut that fits in that slot. The fixture plate goes on top and now our M10 securing bolts go through the plate and into the, the T-nut. One there and one there. Now the clearance holes in the fixture plate were M12 well, sorry we're 12 millimeters so we've got a fair bit of of slack here which will enable us to set up the plate against the rotary table i've set my dividers to 67.79 millimeters or as best as i can get it the two fixture bolts here are 
just done up finger tight like that and now I'm going to measure between the center dot in the end of the bolt which I know is in the center of that hole to the center of the rotary table which is there and that one's pretty good and this one is oh, once I get it in the hole is not so good that's too that's too close so I need to just tap it away so I'll have a little hammer here and I'm just going to tap this a little and now check the hole oh, check the distance again we're getting close and then once I get that set I'll then tighten these up just a little with a 17 millimeter spanner and then we go on to the next stage as can be seen I've put the center back in the center of the rotary table the center is still present in the vertical head and I've lined the two points up exactly now we're not going to be moving the table anymore in the Y axis so down there on the uh, left hand side of the table I've done the, the lock up so it physically can't move now in this direction all of our movement is only going to be in X we're going to be moving the table in that direction now to, to eliminate the backlash what I'm going to do is first of all move the table this way and now move it back and then keep going until that or those centers are exactly in line and at that point just there I will adjust the scale on the X wheel to zero so I undo the clamp bring this round until the zero is in line with the line and tighten it up so I now know that if I'm moving the X wheel clockwise and taking the bed in that direction when it comes to the zero I know that the vertical head is directly over the center of the rotary table we set the fixture plate using the dividers between the center of the table and the center of these two bolts now that's not going to be that accurate so what we're going to do now is set this up more accurately I've dropped the table and I'm now going to move the table 67.79 millimeters in that direction what that means is the center of this center which is in the vertical head should be directly over our center line for our two slots so here we go one rotation of this wheel is five millimeters so 5 10 50, 65 66 67 seven just there now if I rotate the table you'll see that this the end of this nut is now going underneath the center now the center we know is is bang on because that has been controlled by the milling machine the hole in the end of the nut that was positioned using the divider so it's not going to be uh, that accurate and uh, I can see that they are not lining up exactly so what I need to do is make sure that this nut or this bolt is is uh, a little tight but not too tight because we're going to just tap the side of the, the plate with this little hammer I just checked the other bolt as well so I, I know that it's uh, it's loose but not loose enough to move easily and now we tap the plate like that and check the position of the center I'm going to bring the table up a little so I can see how far we have to go and it's not too bad really we're out by about possibly half a millimeter come up and that is about it on that one so I now drop the table a little and we'll try the other bolt so we will bring the table around until the second bolt is underneath the center which is about there and I can see that it is slightly off around about the same amount as the other bolt actually I suppose which you'd expect and I'm going to lift the table and just twiddle the, the rotary table and I can see that it needs to go in this direction just a little so I will tap the fixture plate 
and that is about it. Right now what I have to do is go back to the first one and check to see if that's moved. In fact let's do that quickly now because if it hasn't moved then we are set up. If it has moved then what I have to do is just tap it and then go backwards and forwards and as it happens it's going straight into the center dot. So that's our interface plate um, set up. So what I do now is tighten up the two bolts and then just check the position again. The guidelines that I've scratched on top of the job around here it shows that we've got an awful lot of material to remove off the back of the plate. Now I think what I'm going to do is take this plate off and cut this off with an axaw. Well it did take a little time to axaw the lump off but it's off and it's a load of material we don't have to remove with the uh, milling cutter. It didn't take too long to uh, set up again when you're not having to cuddle a camera all the time it goes pretty quick. Well the job is set up on the fixture plate, the fixture plate is set up on the rotary table, the rotary table is set up on the milling machine and the milling machine is almost ready to take its first cut. But, and I suspect you've guessed what I'm about to say, we've run out of time in this video. In the next video, and the last for this project, I'll show you how to position the cutter, machine and measure the part, and then shape it to fit through the access hole in the circular T-slot. Did it fit? It better do after all this work, but to find out for certain, you need to see the next video. Could you do something like this? Of course you can. And with that, this video is at an end. Take care everybody, and I'll see you next time.